I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. I have another sewing tip of the week for you and this one is about how to use certain stitches on your sewing machine to bind the edges so that your fabric will not unravel. So I'll show you what stitches are on my machine, what stitches I use for my cotton fabrics, and what stitch I use for my stretch knits. So let's take a look at those stitch options. On my computer, I have quite a few overcasting stitches. That's what it says right here. Overcasting, overlock, it's pretty much the same thing. I've selected this one here. This is my favorite. I do have other choices though. When you hit your stitch, you're on your screen, it should tell you what presser foot to use. So it says on my stitch that I've selected to use the J foot. You'll notice that the opening is very wide for the needle to go through. So you want to make sure that your foot, uh, presser foot, has a nice wide opening. Here is my presser foot J. It has a very wide opening right here. And the opening is wide because your needle is going to go side to side as well as moving forward. So again, make sure that that opening is really wide. Your throat plate, it's important your throat plate also has a wide opening. This one here just has a tiny little hole for the needle to go through. So you don't want to use this throat plate. The one I have on my sewing machine is really wide so that that needle can go side to side. If you use the other throat plate I showed you, your needle is going to break the moment it goes down. Also, you want to make sure that you're placing the edge of your fabric on the correct line. Now I have lots of lines here on my throat plate, so that means that for a quarter inch seam, I'm going to press it or place it right up against this line there. If you're doing a 5 8 inch seam, which you do on clothing, it's going to be over farther. So look to see what line on your throat plate. This is my bobbin cover, so I have it on my bobbin cover as well as the throat plate. Always refer to your user's manual for the correct information because my settings may be different than yours. So if you want to know where a particular seam line should be or where you should place the edge of your fabric, take a little sewing gauge like this or a small ruler. For instance, if you want to do a 5 8 inch seam, you would put the 5 8 inch mark on your little ruler and line it up with your needle by lowering the needle gently to see where it is. Then you can place a piece of tape out here to place the edge of your fabric. So you would just slide it right up against wherever that edge should be. First bring the front sides of your fabric together. And I'm just going to do a quarter inch seam. So my stitch pretty much goes right out to the edge when I've got the correct setting. So I'm just going to lower my presser foot and I'm going to go. So I've lined it up on the quarter inch seam and I'm going to begin to stitch. Now as you can see it didn't quite go over there. That's why you always need to test your stitches out on scrap fabric. So I'm going to just not quite line it up on that quarter inch so I can show you what it looks like when it goes all the way over to the edge. On some sewing machines your needle can be adjusted. So if I wanted to, I could adjust my needle farther out to the left as the starting point to get a true quarter inch seam. If you want that 5 8 inch seam, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to press it up against 
my 5 8 inch line and that's used in making clothing. So let me show you what that looks like. So you'll notice it's way over here. So what you do is you take a pair of scissors and you cut off the excess fabric. Some stitches I don't use very often, so a little tip I can give you is make notes. If you're doing a certain type of project, put down what stitch you selected, the stitch width, everything that you used. So for instance, for that quarter inch seam right here, I selected I-20, that's the number on my stitch. The width is 5.0 and I use anywhere from a 3.0 to a 4.0 length. Then for clothing, 5 8 inch seam. And then I noted that I to trim that excess fabric off. And you just file in a way, maybe make a little notebook with those little plastic inserts and slip this in there. Stretch knits. It's important that you don't use a straight stitch seam because your thread will break the moment you stretch your fabric. Stretch knits are a little tricky to sew on. I'm gonna be honest, they're not my favorite to sew on because I mostly sew on cotton, but they are really beneficial to you when you're trying to stitch on clothing to use the right needle and the right stitch. Otherwise, it's a mess. So for most stitching that I do, I use a 9014 needle size. Also, you need to make sure on a stretch knit that it has a ball point, and you probably should use polyester thread. Don't use cotton thread, because it just might break. Again, always test your stitch out. So I'm gonna show you one that I used on a stretch knit, and I wanna show you two examples of it because it is tricky. Always test your stitches out no matter what. I'm just gonna do this one. It's mine is called I-15 and it stitches one stitch forward and then goes over to the edge and then back again. It looks like a little triangle, or excuse me, a half triangle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch. Now on this one, if you try to stitch right up against the edge, it looks sloppy when you're done. Okay, so that's one thing that I don't like about knits. So look at this. See, it's all ripply, it doesn't look very good. So what I like to do when I work on a stretch knit, I try to not go quite out to the edge. I'll come in a little ways, and then the stitch looks a lot better. And you see there, the edge is much neater. And the stitch stretches with you. So when you are sewing on stretch knits, again, make notes on what you did. I actually have two different stitches that I used. And on all of them, I show you how to stitch a way away from the edge, like that 5 8 inch seam. Because most sewing projects, you have for clothing will require a 5 8 inch seam. So I've listed the stitch number that I have, and I have two different ones, and what's the stitch width and the length, and on all of them I show trimming the edges. My favorite way to bind the edges of my fabric is using a serger machine. So if you don't have one, I would try to save your money for it because they are really worth it, especially if you like to make clothing. A lot of people also use it to make quilts. It has two needles on it. There's anywhere from three spools of thread up to six spools of thread on the machine at any one time. But that depends on what model that you buy. I'm not promoting any particular brand 
of a serger machine, you really need to test drive. Go into a dealer store and test drive the serger machines. So this is how simple it is. Once you get it threaded, and by the way, mine has a air threading system, so it helps you thread it part of the way through. So there's two needles on this machine, and I'm gonna slip my fabric in underneath, and it bumps up against an edge over here. It's not underneath the needle yet. So I'm just gonna step on the pedal and let it go, and it will trim the edges off the same time binding it. So let's take a look. Okay, so now I'm gonna let it roll out, cut the thread, and you can see what it looks like. It's all bound, all without having to do any trimming. So now let me show you what it looks like with a stretch knit. So I'm gonna do the same thing, just slide it in there and let it go. And trim the thread, and there you go. You can see what it looks like. I hope you found this information helpful. By the way, if you have a comment or suggestion on how to use certain seams that do the same thing, maybe leave that information below. The viewers would probably find that information helpful to them. Also, if you want to learn how to sew different common seams that you can use in a variety of ways, check for that link below your YouTube screen and it'll take you directly to that tutorial. By the way, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the thumbs up button. Don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to click on the bell. I'm Cheryl and this is a lot of manis. See you next time and happy sewing.